but i think man today doesn't understand the role that the river has to play in the life of a human being because modern education has disconnected us from the sense of awareness that we carried from millennia hence the modern man is prompted to look as a river as just the flow of some water the flow of water just as much as a gutter but when did this pratha started of mixing our urine and you know stool into the rivers the first people to let the drainage from the cities into the rivers were indians who were converted into british nehru even intentionally he said something to the effect that this whole country's dharma is based on these rivers the ganga hi welcome to kc talks the society is progressing ahead modern man has found everything which is very convenient for him and very relaxing for him but we don't have good water to drink good air to breathe clean food to eat swami ji had a conversation with me last night on river water pollution let us understand from him what are his insights on the current day river pollution harish rivasa so i heard uh, um, from somebody and read a document also on yamuna mm-hmm. after it crosses wazirpur barrage mm-hmm. you know almost technically 0% oxygen left in the yamuna river no animal species can live there so this is the this is the progressing and this is the developed nation that we are talking about what do you have to say about this you see there are many mishaps that indians today comfortably attribute to invaders or maybe in the british but you see there's one observation that we have to have that places names have been changed by these administrators but there's not one river whose name they have changed mm, yeah they have not changed there's not a single river all around the in the entire nation even a single river's name the names of the rivers that you get to hear today not just ganga yamuna sankini dakini i mean you may not have heard but they are major rivers in chatisgarh uh, is it yes sankini dankini yeah i said dang I, did i say dakini or dankini dakini no i maybe it's dankini dankini sankini and dankini. so so all these river all these names no, I, have, i have a doubt yes that rabi satluj china were all traditional vedic names they were rabi I, i don't know about that maybe we can just trace back maybe these are deformations there there are certain deformations introduced by the local people but um, in general the name has yet the names of all these rivers have remained uh, including uh, of course all those rivers brahmaputra sindhu down to kaveri tamraparni here godavari in, krishna here they might have not changed, even small but, rivers but in the even pakistan, small rivers flowing down from the mountains pakistan and all because i i'm speaking about these rivers of punjab yes five rivers rabi satluj jinab they don't look like for me as sanskrit names uh even punjab like chinab you know ab means water mm. and pancha means five mm. so five waters so sometimes we the, a word may not appear like a sanskrit word spies is that a sanskrit word no spy doesn't have, there's hardly anything sanskrit about it if you, from the from the s- sense of the sound of it uh-huh. but then there is spy is a sanskrit gupta word gupta bhashane is a sanskrit word oh okay and uh, the um, spies are called spashas also hmm. so there are many uh, words then there are many similarities like that but i think it's noteworthy that most of the name you could say 99% of all the na- the names of the rivers what we have today are the same names that have been uh, around for ages mm. from time immemorial but i think man today doesn't understand the role that the river has to play in the life of a human being because modern education has disconnected us from the sense of awareness that we carried from millennia hence the modern man is prompted to look as a river as just the flow of some water the flow of water just as much as a gutter so i've seen i've heard many people uh, many people just speak uh, the, the, it's an open gutter <coughs> about a river about a river and that's how they treat it because they take their waste 
not just as an individual but as a city uh, what we are doing uh, is that we are letting the waste from the cities into these rivers mm. and we are treating them just as water bodies that can be misutilized but we don't perceive a higher intention you know all um, vedic knowledge all the sages even when for example veda vyasa sat down to compose the bhagavata he sat down by the side of a river he did achamana in the river and sat down and composed the bhagavata so the river is very much connected with our awareness because the rivers are connected directly with our nadis is it yes our and nadis this, are the rivers yes it is it, there is a direct correlation and actually there is there is pramana for this there is lot of evidence for this and this is the way our an- ancients thought ida bhagirathi ganga pingala yamuna smrta tayor madhye gata nadi sushumna khya saraswati jnana hrade hrada means sarovara dhyana jale it's a jala so there is a there is a deep connect between the river and any vaidik sadhaka practitioner on a daily basis dips in the river to connect not just to wash his body of some mala but rather to connect deeply to the very original creational intent that is taking the creation forward from the moment that it has commenced wonderful and that is why aghamarshana is what constitutes the most important part of snana and the very aghamarshana mantra goes rutancha satyancha bhi idha tapaso dhyajayata tato ratriya jayata tata samudro arnavah samudra darnavadathi samvatsaro ajayata aho ratrani vidadhat vishvasya mishato vashi surya chandramasau dhata yatha purvama kalpayata this mantra is the aghamarshana mantra and this is chanted from within the water looking at the sky from under the water and this whole practice is to connect with the creational intent ratancha satyam cha bhi dha tapaso dhya jayata the lord intentionally created this and he envisioned how the universe should unfold from the point of the creation till the point of its annihilation and he meditated on that before letting the creation go before beginning the creation and then that intent is what we seek to connect even in the gayatri dhiyo yo na prachodayat savita savita means the creator so savituhu varenyam bharga so that same thing we are connecting with that same creative intent and we see the river as carrying that in a way that is very tangibly available for our connection mm. so the river plays a far greater role in the lives of especially the people of bharatvarsha than what the modern man can ever imagine it meant life to them because life without realization of the these the deeper insights into the self w- just meant to be meaningless to them i don't know so much about what you spoke of agamarshan and all but one thing is from our childhood we saw that kumbha every 2 12 years one one river get pushkara pushkara mm. is what we call it in telugu mm-hmm. what uh, some kind yes, of that is done. that is a brilliant observation actually because the world doesn't understand what is kumbha mela how can so many people just gather mm. but for what indian culture and sanatana has emphasized in in, in celebrating what is it it is in kannada also pushkara only Yeah, but it's a word that is taken from sanskrit of course uh-huh. but it is a common word 12 years so kaveri also get no yeah there is so you you celebrate it as one a okay, some utsava you, you have a name for it yes there are there are special occasions of worship of almost every river but the 12 years thing for kaveri is called some special name uh, i'm not aware of that so here i have seen in in andhra that you know there's a huge rush of people going to take bath yes. in the rivers yes yeah that's right the andhra people are more aware of something called pushkara Huh. maybe some portions of karnataka they might be but so uh, what i mean to say is when there is some <coughs> such a big celebration that is coming in 12 years mm-hmm. then with what audacity they are mixing their drainage into the river 
So I see that the shows a huge disconnect. There's a huge disconnect between what a person is doing and what he's thinking. What is th- what he is actually because yes. they go to the temple, you know, the praying. I think is... I think this has there is a there is something else that we have to identify and blame for this, because the modern education has disconnected people from their very base, from their very soul, from their authentic self, and so they are not a, they are taught to disregard their base, their their own self. and pursue something and excel in it so when you create zombie beings like that i think you have already destroyed their support of virtue mm. and then there is no way that that person can return to virtue in a way that is very grounded he may exhibit virtue he may imitate virtue he may reflect somebody else's virtue but to have virtues that are based on his very existence his very authentic self which is grounded into his very core i think that is what we are missing but when did this pratha started of mixing our urine and you know stool into the rivers it's not worthy that it didn't happen even until the british was here the first people to let the drainage from the cities into the rivers were indians indians who were converted into british oh, who were this this did not happen in thames in london it happened in india first and then it went there but they had not done that in to the rivers in india ha uh, okay but uh, i i my <coughs> thought process is that they would have seen that london bridge and thames and all of that and they are replicating it in india is it right maybe they tried such a such a replication but then there is no prominent reference anywhere to the british constructing any drainage leading to the river okay. and of course it has become more expressed today because people are using motors and overhead tanks and sumps uh, and uh, taps running water taps in the bathrooms and then that creates such an excess of water and the only, they i don't i think that's the best way or the most easiest way that um, the governance sees that we can dispose that water mm. so you are telling indians were the first people to do that the brown british yes the brown british did this yes and where did they do it first ganga yamuna where did they do this nehru even intentionally uh, i can't quote him verbatim but he said something to the effect that this whole country's dharma is based on these rivers ganga the ganga and uh, and that is what has made them uh, remain laid back he said that yes and so it is it is necessary that's why he sanctioned so many industries on the banks of the ganga he wanted to destroy the basis of the dharma which he considered was the major reason for them to be laid back in the modern progressive world makes a lot of sense to me it is uh, yamuna <coughs> was the source of water for delhi that is the reason i yes. said in the starting of the podcast wazirpur barrage is, is a is a barrage where yamuna enters uh, delhi so mm-hmm. some odd kilometers yamuna travels from yamunotri to you know a lot of places yes, yes. you know ponta saheb yamuna nagar mm-hmm. all are major <coughs> you know cities that civilizations came on the banks of yamuna yes. as such when it enters delhi yes uh, before the barrage the water is okay yes i've seen a documentary where he's taking the water before the barrage mm. and the 22 km stretch when it crosses delhi the river is dead i think you mentioned a very important point there that it carries no oxygen and that's why it cannot be a habitat to fish and other aquatic no, it's a 0% it's, it's proved that's why they cannot be aquatic life there there is no aquatic life I think here there is one more interesting thing that we have to note that aquatic beings are often referred to as vahanas of these deities these rivers are deities they are devis mm. the vahana of ganga is it makara is a crocodile crocodile is one understanding makara is a word which is thrown around uh, a few different beings mm. depends on the context but there was a this is this is not verified research but then it 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 uh, it could be uh, uh, it could be studied and then uh, understood in a, in a, in a better way research could be used to uh, verify this that uh, actually makara in in connection with uh, ganga means the gangetic dolphin 
Oh, ga- oh Ganga has dolphins also, yes. They're called Gangetic dolphins. Mm. But yeah, then, as a part of information, uh, yes. I, uh, I, I saw, saw a video or I read somewhere that Ganges has dolphins. Yes. They are... Th- their physical features are a little different than the saltwater dolphins. Ah, than the saltwater dolphins, yes. So, I had a friend of mine who brought this up and I, I think it was very interesting because the very first thing we have to note is that the very mention that Makara, an aquatic being, Makara is definitely an aquatic being, as being the Vahana of Ganga, it has something very symbolic. It is conveying something very profound. So, it is important that the aquatic life it's we cannot have the rivers as just gutters of water flowing uh, that's not our concept of rivers we see the rivers as habitat to a wide range of aquatic beings the fishermen of southern india they have their own way of honoring the rivers and the ocean uh, of course they fish but they also see to it that they always perceive these water bodies as worshipable so this connect between the rivers and the realm of uh, the life of sadhakas and life of lives of people in general i think this, 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 it's a it's a whole area of study that we all need to urgently become collectively aware of all the great sages ashramas are mostly on the banks of rivers yeah, yeah. that's what we tunga is famous for durvasa rishyashringa so the rish- so the river had something to do these sages got their insights because of their s- sitting by the side of the rivers i think it is it is noteworthy so this very vision that the river is just some water moving i think it has to be corrected by the knowledge that we held on this land from millennia which is obvious to us which becomes very conspicuous to us when we read the bhagavata or the ramayana or the puranas mm. so the definitely you know this i again when it comes to rivers also i, I see swami ji's roles <laughs> every time i'm bringing this point but it is true mm. that you know people are throwing in the name of harati the plastic yes and the in the name of uh, kumkuma <laughs> again that kumkuma is definitely not yes. the turmeric it doesn't even smell turmeric today's kumkuma is all some chemical yes. thing and healthy also yes. that that itself is another chemical Yes. So they're act technically you know in the doing puja if you go full you know from the coconut that something yes. tied on it that plastic this yes. that everything you know and the floating diyas also mm. are another plastic yes yeah, again plastic yeah, again plastic. plastic so the, your rituals that you know as as swami ji is that you have given to the to the world to do some sadhana <laughs> that is actually impediment for this uh, uh, river sustenance and ganges also one important point swami ji is after flowing through from gangotri glaciers and coming down crossing haridwar and you know, all mighty cities crosses kanpur this the ganga is half polluted the entire leather tanning industry of kanpur pollutes ganga entire dyeing industry of uh, you know delhi pollutes yamuna heavy metal toxic pesticides soaps <laughs> our soap waters our entire thing you know detergents everything pollute i think most of the customs that people follow with regard to worshiping rivers like leaving floating diyas these i don't think were actually taught and uh, uh, sustained by the swami ji's or the mathas but these are ways of worship i think that people um, developed on their Krish own brahman has if not yes. swami ji's but so <coughs> and you said an another important point that uh, the rivers are nadis yes and what will happen uh, so you said some uh, you know in sanskrit ida uh, bhagirathi ganga pingala yamuna smrta so pingala yamuna you are telling if 0% oxygen is there in yamuna means technically the river is dead right this is something which the modern man might find a little difficult to understand hmm. but that is the level of connectivity like krishna mentions in the bhagavad gita paraspara sambhutam everything is paraspara sambhuta we are all very closely connected with everything and so the ida pingala these are directly connected with our functions and, and with the, with our with the functions of our intellect and uh, internal faculties with our abilities of discretion uh, each nadi has a very 
crucial role to play in our overall well-being and in our function as human beings and especially in sadhana so <coughs> so what technically happens so shumna, the yamuna is gone yes. so happens? when these rivers are polluted or mm-hmm. when they disappear there has been also disappearance of rivers now that very sushumna you told saraswati we don't find it sushumna represent it is connected directly with saraswati and saraswati became gupta gamini we have reference of this in uh, bhagavata in the, in the shastras gupta gamini means going underground yes she became hidden hmm. and and when saraswati becomes hidden the sushumna which was so readily available to for the people to experience is now available only on deep yogic practice hmm. so she becomes hidden here also Oh, okay. so in ayurveda people understand yad yad brahmande tat tat pindande yeah purushoyam loka samhitah hmm. so everything that's existing not just the rivers this actually applies to even the mountains yeah yeah the planets the outside plan- yes. universe there is something called loka nyasa that we do om bhuhu om bhuvah om swah om maha om janah om tapah om satyam om tat sa vidur varenyam so that actually sh- that actually is a meditation that how how all the lokas the entire universe is there within this much and then what we are doing the japa tapa that we are doing is in the context not just of our individual self but it is in the context of the entire universe so the nadis inside i think they have a very important role to play in 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 bringing out such awareness so definitely this polluting of the river will affect human nadi system also yes it will it it will lead to the disappearance of one or the other ability mm-hmm. in the human being how many nadis are there in the body 30 Pr- the primary nadi is the sushumna <laughs> then it has the ida pingala and other nadis around it and then it's almost like a chandelier around the sushumna uh, all around uh, in, in the entire body there are 72000 important nadis there sh- there there should be 72000 rivers also present on the planet no uh, there are there, there are i i wouldn't i i i am not so sure about the exact number of rivers but the connection between the rivers and the nadis is already well established the quotation that i gave is from dhyana snana that sanat kumara quotes it, it that sanat kumara mentions these are words of sanat kumara when he says that ida bhagirathi ganga that sushumna is saraswati saraswati means she has the she she has she she pulls towards god <coughs> ida is bhagirathi and uh, pingala uh, ida, ida and pingala is yamuna so these are words of sanat kumara okay. it is a uh, it, it is a yogic understanding which is a, which is a which, which is um, of of direct inference to a mm. yogi to a sadhaka so unless the rivers are understood so profoundly i think we are never we, we will never be able to live our lives fully actually we get deprived of a full life when we have lost a river it's not just a water body in a distant land that we have lost that doesn't concern us mm. anything that happens to a river anywhere it concerns us very deeply and it affects us very deeply and there are some things that we will lose which are very vital to our existence and which are vital to the pursuit of uh, to the core pursuits of our lives very nice samji so we will understand this concept and develop a reverence for rivers yes thank you so much Thank you, very much. thank you for bringing yeah. this topic up yeah. and uh, we'll do it. more such yes. such things that yes. the people have missed it a hole in the modern gamut of spirituality yes. anyhow the modern civilization has missed it i think we have to design ways in which this fact about the rivers can be brought to the realization of the common man yes that when that they can be and i'm and i'm sure people they might have realized it but it would be there in 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 a layer of their existence that they would have rendered it within their own minds as non implementable yeah. so we should we should i think remove that gap 
and make them actually understand this position this import the significance of the rivers and um, regard them as such and 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 be benefited by them and also by preserving these rivers we should live a fuller life definitely hmm. thank you so much swami ji thank you hari shri nivas hari rama